Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at calculating probabilities with the normal distribution, mostly on our calculators. So we can answer questions from exercise 3b. So let's get started. We know that the normal distribution is a way that we can use to calculate probabilities. We know it's a, a roughly bell-shaped curve where it is perfectly symmetric on the left and the right-hand side. It looks very similar to this thing here. We know that the mean is centred bang in the centre and the standard deviation measures how spread out the curve is. Now in this question here, we're asked to work out the probability that the outcome is less than 33. When the mean is 30 and the standard deviation is 4, this is how we would write it in the normal distribution. It would be 30, 4 squared. And remember, standard deviation squared is the variance. So it's effectively the variance that goes in the second part of the comma there. But we generally write it as standard deviation squared, just like we have here. So what we need to do then is we, first of all, draw a good graph, because that will give you an idea as to whether your probability is going to be more than 0.5 or less than 0.5. Uh, it's a good way of just checking your answer at the end. So in this case here, we have a mean of 30, and we want to work out the probability of less than 33. Now, obviously, 33 will go to the right of 30, and we want to work out the probability less than 33. And remember, with the normal distribution, it's the area under the curve that gives us the probability here. So this area, this yellow area that we've shaded in here, that is going to be the probability. So what we do then is we go to our calculator, and first of all, we press Menu, and then we go down to option number seven. So hit option number seven. Press seven for distributions. Now what we're looking for here is to use option number two, the normal CD, the normal cumulative distribution function. So hit option number two then. Once you've done that, you need to now state your lower and upper values on your x-axis here. Now, we want to work out less than 33, so there really is no lower bound. So what we generally do is we type in a really, really low number, like minus 99 or minus 999, um, to help us out with that. The upper boundary, therefore, is going to be at 33. The next thing we do is we type in the standard deviation and the mean, so that would be 40, sorry, 4 and then 30. And then we hit enter and we get our answer, 0 0.77337, 0 0.773 to 3 significant figures. Well, that should be a 4 if we round it to four significant figures. Okay, so there we are. So the C the binary so the normal C D mode works out um, a probability in between two given boundaries. And if you just want to work out a less than probability, you just use a really, really low lower boundary. Or if you want to work out a greater than probability, just use a really, really high upper boundary. For the next question, we're going to work out the probability of x being greater than or equal to 24. Notice how on these two questions here, we've got a less than sign and a greater than or equal to sign. Actually, it doesn't matter if you use a greater than or equal to or greater than symbol, because it's just going to be an area from a cutoff point line. So it doesn't really matter whether there's an equality on this inequality or not. <coughs> So it's going to be the probability of 24 as the outcome or more. So put a little notch at 24 and then it's everything greater than 24. So we're expecting our answer here to come out to be more than 0.5. So grab a calculator into that normal CD mode again. The lower boundary this time will be 24. The upper boundary will be something massive because we don't want it to be restricted on that upper boundary. So type in 99 or 999. Type in then your standard deviation and your mean, and you get your final answer of 0 0.332, 0 0.9332. For the next question, we want to work out the probability that the outcome is in between 33.5 and 38.2. So what we'll do is we'll put two markers there and there. Go into our binomial, so, sorry, our normal CD mode and type in the lower boundary of 33.5, the upper boundary of 38.2, standard deviation and mean, and we get a final answer of 0 0.1706. And according to our graph, that would be a good approximate for the answer, or a good, uh, our graph would indicate that that is the correct answer. Uh, it's not more than a half in this case. 
And for the final part D here, find the probability that x is less than 27 or more than 32. I think what it will in fact be easier here is if we work out the probability of x being in between 32 to 27, and then we can just take away the answer from 1, and that will leave us with the probability of less than 27 and more than 32. So what we're looking for here is this region here, add this region here, and the way we're going to do that is by finding this region here first, and then taking it away from 1, because we know that the whole area underneath the curve will equal 1. So lower boundary of 27, upper boundary of 32, standard deviation 4, mean of 30, and the answer we get there is 0.464835. And then we just need to do a one takeaway subtraction to leave us with 0.5352 as the answer to this question. And now for a question in context. An IQ test is applied to a population of adults. The scores X on the test are found to be normally distributed with X is distributed by the normal distribution with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. That's what this symbol here means. It means that x is distributed, that's what the squiggly line bit means, distributed. n means the normal distribution. And then inside the brackets you've got two key values for the normal distribution. The first one is the mean, and the second one is the variance, but we write it as the standard deviation squared. So you can clearly see here that 15 squared is the variance, but 15 is the standard deviation. Moving on, adults scoring more than 140 on the test are classified as genius. Find the probability that an adult chosen at random achieves a genius classification. And part B, uh, 20 adults take the test. Find the probability that two or more are classified as genius. So... What we're going to need to do in part A is use your calculator as before, use the lower limit as 140, the upper limit as 175, or just a really big number if you want to have an IQ of more than 140. Uh, this means that the mean is 100 and the standard deviation is 15. So what I've done here, into the normal CD mode of the calculator, 140 would be the lower bound, upper bound would be 999, something much, much bigger than 140. Standard deviation of 15, mean of 100. And we get this answer here. It's written in standard form, but you would obviously write your final answer here as 0 0.00383 to three significant figures. Then we move on to part B. A natural fact, what's happening in part B is it's no longer a normal distribution question, it's a binomial distribution question. You can tell this because we have 20 adults, so that must mean in this question n is equal to 20. Um, we have either they are a genius or not a genius, so we only have two outcomes. And we know that, generally speaking, if we're picking people at random, then the probability of someone being a genius is not going to affect the probability of the next person being a genius, um, assuming that we've chosen the people at random. So we have a normal, so we have a binomial distribution here. We have n is 20, and the probability of successfully picking a genius is 0 0.00383. So this is our binomial distribution. If it, were, if it were up to me, I would have used a different letter here other than X, maybe use a Y letter instead. You don't want to get confused with those distributions. Y be the number of geniuses. So Y is greater than or equal to is what we want to calculate. Now remember, for the, bino for the normal distribution, it's very difficult to calculate uh, from a certain amount of successes and upwards. The way we do it on the calculator using the CD mode is to work out the number of successes, in this case the number of geniuses, or fewer, and then do 1 minus it. So you want to select binomial, sorry, no, binomial CD mode. You then want the variable option. You then want to select uh, one genius, or fewer, out of 20 with a probability of 0 0.00383. And when you type that in, it turns it into this standard form answer here. And you get a final answer of 0 0.99733792666. But obviously your final answer here is going to be 1 minus this. Um, so we get a final answer here of 0 0.00266 to 3 significant figures. 
Okay, so there we are. That's the answer to that question then. So, pause the video and have a go at this question here then. Remember, when you read this notation here, this says that the mean is 6 and the standard deviation is 0 0.8. So, pause the video and have a go at this question. Okay, so in this question here, the volume of a soap dispense, so soap dispensed by a soap dispenser uh, on a, each press is x millilitres, uh, is modelled by the normal distribution, where 6 is the mean, so usually 6 millilitres comes out, with a standard deviation of 0 .0 0.8. Part A is find the probability that x is more than 7. So what I would do here then is uh, use the lower boundary of 7, the upper boundary of 99, something way bigger than 7, uh, standard deviation 0 0.8, mean of 6, and we get a final answer here of 0 0.1056. Okay, so there we are. And then the probability of x being less than 5, well, let's do exactly the same thing. Your upper boundary now is 5, your lower boundary is minus 99, and we get the same answer here, which is particularly interesting. Why is that the case? If we were to draw a graph of what we've just worked out here, we've got the normal distribution that looks like this, 6 will be in the centre, and we want to work out the probability of 7 or more, that's going to be this region here, and for the second part we want to work out the probability of 5 or fewer, 5 millilitres or fewer coming out of that soap dispenser. You can see here that this graph here is perfectly symmetric, the same answer will appear on the left and the right. Moving on to part B, the soap dispenser is pressed three times. Find the probability that on all three presses, less than five millilitres of soap is dispensed. So in this case here, for part B, we want less than five millilitres to be dispensed. So we're going to have to do then less than five millilitres, and then we're going to have to multiply this by itself three times, <coughs> less than five millilitres. Uh, we're multiplying this by itself three times because we want, uh, effectively on the tree diagram, to go along the branch of less than five millilitres three times. So what we're now going to effectively do is calculate 0 0.10564977. 37 all to the power of three and we get an answer there of 0.00118. So there we are, that's the answer to this question here then. So hopefully that made sense. Uh, have a go at plenty of the questions from exercise 3b, particularly those problem solving ones and the um, exam style questions as well. Great, thanks very much for watching.